Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Reject Films, back with another review for you guys from the Warner Archive Collection. This one, probably one of the more anticipated titles. I uh, always heard a lot of good things about this movie and really wanted to check this one out. Pretty much just been reviewing for them here lately and uh, really have enjoyed most of the titles they've sent to me. There hasn't been one title uh, that I haven't at least liked. Uh, of course, some more than others, but uh, this is one I was definitely looking forward to checking out. Of course, it's glaring like crazy. The lighting, but oh well. Um, yeah, 1974 uh, made-for-TV movie. Uh, of course, being made for TV, it wasn't shot in widescreen or anything like that, so it is in the old 4.3 format, uh, with the bars on the left and right and everything, but yeah, just a really good movie, uh, for a made for TV movie from back then, uh, you know, rated PG and everything, it was, uh, surprisingly really well done, um, of course, like I say, I always heard, I'm trying to get that glare off there, I always heard good things about it, so... I went in with, uh, you know, high expectations and everything, and I wasn't really let down. And, uh, again, uh, another great uh, transfer from Archive Collection, which their transfers have always been top-notch from what I've seen. This one here, absolutely no special features at all. Very bare bones. A lot of their movies don't have a whole lot of features, but this one only has, like, subtitles, and that is it. Uh, no trailer, no commentary, no nothing. But, uh, for it, I mean, it is a TV movie, so it's not like... Um, there was a lot of behind the scenes going on or anything like that. So, um, yeah, just run through the story real quick for those that don't know what it's about. I'll try not to give everything away, but of course there is going to be some spoilers. Uh, so if you haven't seen it and you don't want to know anything, then definitely stop watching now. Um, kind of hard to talk about it without, you know, giving some major plot, uh, points away. So Ronald's a, a pretty, uh, kind of. I guess nerdy kid, um, doesn't have a lot of friends or anything, pretty much a mama's boy. Uh, his mom, you know, thinks the world of him and everything, and uh, she'd been divorced from his dad for like 10 years, and, uh, you know, he's uh, ha has like a grudge against his dad for whatever reason and everything, kind of doesn't really think much of him, and uh, he's just kind of, I don't know, he seems like a kind of person that just keeps to himself and everything like that, and Kind of kind of has a psycho-esque vibe to it, uh, where his mom would do anything to protect him and everything like that, and uh, just kind of that, that creepy mother-child vibe to it. I don't know. Um, so you can tell right from the beginning his mom has some kind of illness, and she's not doing too well health-wise and everything, and he's trying to uh, take care of her while she's taking care of him and feeding him and everything, and he's... Uh, making sure she has her medicine and everything like that for uh, her pain and everything. She has a issue with her uh, gallbladder, which goes into effect later on in the in the movie. Um, so he goes to this uh, this kind of pool party thing that's going on. Try to talk to this girl that he you know has a thing for, and she wants nothing to do with them. Blows him off and everything. And all the other kids are kind of giving him crap and you know making fun of him and everything. So he runs off from that and stumbles down uh, this little pathway uh, tree area and uh, kind of runs into this other girl and she's giving him a hard time too they are you know they know each other and everything but you know she's making fun of him and he doesn't take it too well and kind of has a quarrel with her and uh, things happen where she uh, he ends up accidentally uh, killing her and uh, that's really how this movie all kind of starts is with that incident uh he gets back home and uh, of course he ends up telling his mom what happened and everything and he's just all scared and uh she's pretty sure that the cops are eventually going to come come around you know going to door to door and uh seeing you know what what happened to this girl and everything and sure, sure enough they make it to their house and you know people had seen him you know leave the party at this time and uh, they kind of know it was him, and uh, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. But uh, before the cops get there, uh, his mom has this idea of uh, turning their downstairs bathroom into his hiding spot where he can uh, stay until everything blows over and everything. And uh, so they turn that into his, his living area, 
uh, put up wallpaper and everything like that so you can't tell that there's anything there. Uh, it just looks like a wall. Uh, make a passageway through the uh, pantry area that connects to the, the bathroom. Man, that glare is irritating me. Um, uh, and uh, so he stays in there and his mom's taking care of him, you know, bringing him food and everything. They have a, a no, nosy, I almost said noisy, n nosy neighbor uh, who's always looking in the windows and everything. She kind of suspects something's not quite right. Uh, but, uh, eventually his mom gets to the point where she has to go have surgery on her gallbladder. Uh, she ends up not making it and, uh, he's kind of like struggling during the meantime of, uh, her passing and this other family moving in, uh, as far as like food and everything like that. And he starts kind of losing his mind a little bit more, starts living in this fantasy world that he created and, uh. Or he's some kind of prince or whatever, and there's this princess and all this, and there's a you know a villain associated with it too. He's uh, believes this world really exists and everything, and so once this family moves in, he becomes obsessed with I believe it's the youngest of the of the girls in the family. Um, believes that she's his princess and <coughs> everything like that, and he even uh creates uh peepholes throughout the house too um to be able to keep tabs on this family and everything and uh i mean it's this old victorian house and just you know pretty big house and uh everything so he's you know got kind of like a like a passageway he made in there as well to be able to see other things and uh the youngest starts hearing things that he's doing in that room too. She believes the house is like haunted and everything. And of course the other sisters are kind of, you know, giving her, you know, crap for that. And eventually, uh, I was kind of trying to move along here. Um, he gets to the point where he ends up hanging up this poster that he drew of her as this princess and, uh, shows himself in her room and everything. And of course she freaks out and, He's kind of chasing her, ends up keeping her uh, captive somewhat in the uh, neighbor's house. Uh, an incident happened before this with a neighbor I'm not going to give away. but um, So she's kind of trapped over there, and of course her family's looking for her and everything. And eventually one of the sister's boyfriends, um, he goes after him as well and keeps him down, or not down, but keeps him in his uh, room that he made as well. And eventually, shortly after that, uh, incidents happen to where he's kind of found out and uh, the police are called and everything, and the movie's over. <laughs> pretty pretty simple storyline, but, um, I mean, there are some other things that go on too. Um, you know, they're kind of told about uh, Ronald through the boyfriend of the one sister, uh, you know, that he killed this girl and all this, and um, nobody knows where he went to, and, you know, people believe he still lives in that house and everything like that. And uh, Yeah, just a, a really well-done movie, though, for a, for a TV movie from that time and everything. It was really well-written and everything. Uh, it's only, I think, 74 minutes long, so it's pretty short which was about the average for a TV movie. I think had it been a big theatrical movie, it might have been better with a longer runtime and everything, really delve into his psyche a little more. But um, I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, definitely recommend picking this one up. Uh, again, I apologize for that Claire. But uh, I'll show you guys the artwork here. And the back. Uh, yeah, glaring bad. There we go. Uh, there's the, uh, synopsis there. And, uh, creepy, voyeuristic, and endless, endless, endlessly entertaining, a must-see. Um, but yeah, just, I think he did a really good job in this role. Definitely, uh, the right person to play it. And, uh, again, another great transfer from the Archive Collection. I can't praise them enough for, uh, their quality. Um, like I say, the only thing I wish is that they had more features, definitely, but, um, uh, 
definitely worth picking up if you guys haven't seen it. There was a DVD release before this. This is the first time this is available on Blu-ray. And uh, if you guys are unsure about it, definitely pick it up on the next 4 for, four for 44 sale. Um, it's always a great time to stock up on these titles. And uh, yeah, uh, I apologize. I kind of ran through this really quick and kind of missed some things. But um, yeah, it's one I definitely, I, I didn't lose interest in the whole time. Uh, you really feel the relationship between him and his mom, like it feels real, and you really feel for him. Uh, he's not really necessarily a bad guy, he's just like bad things happen uh, to him, I guess, um, or when he's around, and he just doesn't know how to handle the situation. But um, yeah, if you guys are fans of movies where, you know, somebody just kind of loses their mind and goes into this other world and kind of lives out this fantasy world, and, uh, you know, like I said, definitely a psycho-esque beginning there where he's really taken care of by his mom, and his mom would just do anything in the world to uh, protect him and um, everything. It was just, I mean, it, it, it had a creepy vibe through it, but not anything, like, too scary, I guess. It was more of just a... It was just a movie, I guess. I mean, we really just... You feel sympathy for him, but yet you want him to, you know, pay the consequences for his actions. But, um, yeah, like I said, definitely recommend checking this one out, guys, if you haven't checked it out. Bad Ronald, 1974 TV movie. Um, he's just so innocent. Anyway, uh, I'll see you guys on the next review. It'll be for Dracula AD 1972, uh, hopefully here in the next week or so. And uh, I'll see you guys then. Take care. Bye.